Good evening, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well tonight. We'll give you a minute to find me. Let's see if any eyeballs jump on here tonight for our learning live. We are going to be playing with tag punches and embossing powders. As you're tuning in, please make sure you say hello. I'm trying to get my workspace all organized here. I feel like I'm a little bit off center. Let's see, hello Donna, hello. There we go. Got a few more people jumping on, hello. Welcome to our learning live on Tuesday night. Tonight we are going to be playing with a bunch of different things. And I kind of planned this out as, and I don't want to say good, better, best, because all creations are good. But I want to kind of take you through a progression of, okay, here's some really simple stuff to do with embossing powder on a tag. Here's the next level and then here's the wow level. And wow is not pun intended, even though I'm gonna be using a whole bunch of different uh, wow embossing powders. Uh, wow is probably one of our favorite brands for embossing powders and they have some really fun stuff, um, especially for the holiday season with lots of sparkle and lots of good stuff. So without further ado, as you ladies are all joining in, hello, 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 let us get crafting. So uh, the main tag tool that I'm going to be using tonight is the Hunky Dory Tag Punches. And there are two different ones. Uh, this one gives you your nice straight edges if you like that particular look. And this one gives you a fancier kind of scallopy edges. And the nice thing about these punches is that you can get tags in three different sizes and use the same punch. And the way it works is um, you can do one and a half inches wide, two inches wide, or two and a half. And this is the same for both of those, um, both of these punches. And if you look down here, you can see there's little grooves. And I'll show you when we go to use it, but what you do is you tuck your paper in those grooves and then it allows you to just really snug it in, push it back, punch and create that decorative layer. It's really super easy. And as I was um, playing around, I was thinking, well, you could also do this to create labels of sorts that if you wanted this decorative uh, display on both ends, there's, you know, whether it's for a title or a journaling block in a scrapbook layout or in your traveler's notebook, uh, it give you can, you can absolutely do both ends. So without further ado, because my time is ticking, I am going to start by doing um, just a straight pattern paper and an embossed image and an embossed sentiment. So the nice thing about embossing powder is that you can uh, really layer it right onto even a pattern paper and still get it to show up really, really nicely. Uh, for this particular tag, I'm gonna use a cute little bumblebee. I think it's called Santa Bee uh, from Honey Bee Stamps. And I'm going to use a sentiment from an Echo Park stamp. Let me just dig it out here. So we've got some really amazing uh, sentiment stamps in the store from Echo Park. And there's all kinds. I think there was you know six or seven different ones. I had trouble choosing which one I was going to use tonight. But I'm going to be using a bunch of these um, with the different tags tonight. So to start with, I've got some paper from Photoplay. It just got this blue snowflake on it. And on the back is the ugly sweater which I absolutely love, but it doesn't really go with the look that I am going for. So I am simply going to take two pieces 
and glue them back to back so that I have the blue snowflake on both sides. Now these pieces are um, wide enough to fit the largest tag size, which is two and a half inches wide. And I've cut mine to four inches long. You can absolutely cut them any length you want. You just don't wanna to go too short. You're better off to go longer and then be able to trim it down and trim it off. So I'm just gonna use some liquid glue and start by drawing an outline because with this you want to make sure that all of your edges uh, get glued down and i'm especially going to make sure i get the top so that when we punch out the different corners um it's going to stay stuck all right i've got two glue bottles on the go here so i got to make sure i keep using the right one and then i'm just going to put them edge to edge side to side and squish it down so one thing I learned in playing with these punches and planning out my designs is uh, you really should do your punching first or you're going to get <laughs> something like this where my sentiment uh, just um, got cut off in the mix. So I'm gonna make sure I do my die cutting first Give this a little second to dry. And the other thing that I learned is even though this says 2.5 inches, you almost want it just that fraction of a hair, even smaller than 16 of an inch, just so that it fits in, in between the two tracks. So I'm just gonna take my guillotine trimmer and trim it down my sides are pretty even, which is good, but I'm just gonna trim off that little teeny tiny bit, like so. And I have a little bit of an edge hanging off the bottom, so while I've got this out, let's do the same. All right. So like I said, I'm now going to punch out my tag shape. And so like I said, I'm just gonna snug it right in these tracks. You do have to kind of maneuver it. It's gonna go in pretty far, but when you get to the point where it doesn't push anymore, this is where we do the cut, like that. So now I've got this beautifully shaped tag. I've even got a hole punched uh, for my ribbon. And now I can decorate. So like I said, I'm just gonna start off with just a straight embossed image and I'm going to use, actually I'm gonna use three different embossing powders on this tag. I am going to use In the Navy, which is one of my uh, favorite colors because it's a really, really beautiful navy blue. Um, so not quite black, not gray, lots of richness here. I'm gonna use my opaque bright white super fine. And I'm gonna use this for the sentiment because it is a fairly small and detailed sentiment. And when you're doing things that are really delicate or really fine, you do wanna go with that super fine powder. That means that the grains are smaller and they're gonna stick a little bit better to um, the surface. And then I'm going to finish off with a little bit of um, edging with the white twinkle, which has this beautiful silver sparkle in it. Uh, throughout tonight, um, I am gonna be using my heat gun, which I have my Sizzix uh, embossing gun here. So it will get loud in a couple of places, but I will do my best to keep that short. Okay, I am going to use WOW embossing ink. You can also use Versamark. These are fairly equal in terms of effectiveness. The reason why I like the WOW a little bit more is that it is slow drying. So it gives you that little bit more time to play and get your powder on. And I'm just realizing I do not have my little funnel tray, but I do have my little friend, George, who is my vacuum and will help me clean up. So let me just get a piece of scrap paper.
This is just a piece of printer paper from my computer and I'm gonna fold it in half to create a little work surface, create a little funnel so I can put the powder back into the jars. Now with embossing powder, it is helpful if you kind of take it in stages. So I'm gonna do my little Santa Bee first, then I will do my sentiment and then I will do my edging. So we're just gonna take it step by step, keeping an eye on my time. Okay. So I'm just inking it up the same way that I would ink up um, with an ink pad and I'm going to stamp him down. You could also use your stamping platform if you wanted to make sure that you got good coverage. I'm feeling pretty darn confident tonight so fingers crossed this all works well. Alright now I'm going to just plunk that in the middle of my funnel. I'm going to sprinkle out a little bit of this in the navy for my bee. Shift it around a bit. Make, oh, looks like I've missed a couple of spots over here, so we'll add a little bit more. And then I'm just gonna do some gentle taps to get that excess off. Now the other thing I like to have handy is just a little paintbrush of sorts. So any of these, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, there's little errant grains of the sand, the powder that I'm just gonna flick off. Let me get this out of the way. This navy is nice because it does have a little tiny bit of a sparkle to it as well. There we go. And I always like to put the lid on because I am a klutz and I wanna make sure that I don't spill that where I don't want it. All right, so let's just get rid of some of these little extra flecks. And George is gonna vacuum. And now I am going to use my heat gun just to set this. And I am trying to watch comments, but it does keep disappearing on me, so if I miss any of your comments, I will make sure I come back and answer them afterwards. So I'm just gonna heat this with my heat gun. Again, I apologize, it's gonna get noisy here for a second. And there's no magic amount of time that you just have to look to see if your powder is turning shiny and if you gently touch it if it flakes away then it's not quite set yet but look look how cute that little bee is right there now i'm going to go ahead and add my sentiment so once again my embossing ink gonna make sure he's he's cool yeah he's not too bad and let's put this sentiment right on the bottom and just like normal stamping you want to press firmly but really try hard not to rock I always like to cover up my ink and now I'm going to use that opaque bright white super fine and again just dump it over make sure I move it around and then flick there we go the white is a little hard to see it will look a lot brighter once it's heated there we go let's put this Back in, lid on, and now I'm going to heat, so bear with me. And 
and just like magic that sentiment just pops right up there and so you can see that sentiment a whole lot better now um, nice and white and crisp now you've seen that I've been uh, in both cases I've heated from the top if you were using a chunkier embossing powder or if you were having trouble getting that powder to really stick you can always start from underneath, get it melted, and then move on top just to finish it off. Now I'm gonna show you one more technique on this particular one because we wanna use this white twinkle. Uh, let me give a little vacuum with George here first. Just to make sure all those bits are gone. So in this case, I'm taking just a little sliver of sponge, just like, again, I would with ink and I am going to sponge just around the edges. So, and you do need to move a little bit faster with this because very little ink is getting on here, but it does look really cool when it's done. Okay, let's see if I got enough on here. The nice thing about this too is if you don't have enough on here, you can always go back afterwards and add a little bit more. So with the twinkle, what I'm doing is I'm giving it a good shake to make sure all that silver doesn't settle out. And it's all nice and mixed in. And now we're just gonna, and it's okay to be generous like this because we've got that funnel. So we can go ahead and pop it back in afterwards all right okay get all the extra off let's tap this back in yeah this is definitely where I'm going to need George going to heat. It looks like I missed a little spot down here so I can always go back afterwards. All right, so there, that's the first tag. And so I've just used it to stamp right on the paper. I have um, put a sentiment on and edged it as well to give it lots of sparkle. All it needs is a little ribbon now and it's all done. How do you like that? All right. My time is ticking. I'm trying to keep, be mindful of our time here. So let's move on to idea number two. So I have already gone ahead and glued my paper down. I've chosen this black gingham and then a pink polka dot on the back. Looks like I do need to trim it down just a smidge. And in this case, we are going to create two tags and layer them. So this pattern paper one actually I am not even going to do anything on it other than trim it and cut it down. What I am going to do though is I am going to uh, emboss and I'm going to do this technique to show you that you can do three colors in one. This is from a trio that is, I believe it's called Pinkalicious. And it's got three really gorgeous pink uh, embossing powders in the trio. And it's nice that they all beautifully coordinate together. So I'm again, just need to trim this just a smidge. So this white one here is now uh, two inches. I'm going down just that one size 
in measurement. And you know what? This time, let's do, let's do the square one. So same thing, I'm just going to snug my piece in that track and I'll punch it down. The double layer does make it a little bit harder. Come on, guy. There we go. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with my second one. So this one is a little bit smaller. I did three and three quarters by two. Same idea, but this time we're gonna snug it in that middle track. So always just make sure that you're right in the track and you will be perfectly centered. So there we go. Oh, looks like I need a good George. Come on, George. All that glitter. Okay, this time I am going to use my stamping platform because I really do want to make sure I get some good coverage on my ink. And this time I'm doing uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. This is one of the ones I did with my samples. So let's get that ready. Is it gonna fit? It's gonna just fit here. Magnet, magnet. Okay. And my, my embossing ink. I'm going to stamp it once. And just to get really good coverage, I'm going to stamp it a second time. There we go. All right, so like I said, this time we're going to do this tricolor treatment. And if you have a little spoon or a little scoop, I actually have just some slushy straws that have this little scoop. It makes it a lot easier. Gives you lots of control. So let me find my pink. Let me put them in order. So I've got my light, my medium, and my dark. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna be brave. I'm gonna open all three. Now in this case, I'm going to try to be a little bit more frugal because if these mix, I don't want to put them back necessarily in the container. I'm just going to take a little scoop like this and just, I'm going to go on that diagonal like I did on here. So just that top left corner. I'm going to cover with that light pink. Make sure I get good coverage. And I mean, these jars, you get lots and lots and lots. Lots and lots and lots. So if you get, if you're not putting it all back in, not the end of the world. Now, let me just, let's see what I can tap back in. And I'm gonna move on to the second color. Come up the center. And then the last color, you guys can still see me hopefully. Let's get that last corner out. I'm gonna put Yeah, I wasn't super successful at getting it back in the jar, but not to worry. If I had an extra little jar, I could save this mixed version, but I'm not gonna worry about it tonight. Just gonna go in the trash. Or if you were doing multiples, you could then dump it onto another one. But let's tappy tap. -tap. 
and heat. So here we go. Everything looks pretty good. This one, because of all the glitter, it is a little bit gritty. So it's sometimes a little hard to, to know whether you've got it heated well. You can always go back over it if you wish. And then I've got some little uh, reinforcements that I cut out using my, um, my um, Elizabeth Craft planner goodies. So let's just put a little reinforcement around that circle. And then what I would do is I would layer these up so that you've got a two piece tag. So let's see if we, you know what, this might even just be the perfect length as it is. So I'm going to go through. Maybe. And voila. Oops, that didn't go all the way through. There we go. So there, you've got a beautiful just layered tag with your embossed sentiment on the top. And I could do that same technique that I did with the B and go around that um, black checker uh, with some of the pink. Or if you're doing an image, I use that same sponging technique to create pink snow here on our um, snowman. So that is your second way. You can layer paper on top of paper. And then technique number three is my favorite. We are going to use acetate. If I can get my pieces of paper picked up here. So I have my tag paper already punched or cut and prepped and I am going to use the Merry and Bright sentiment this time and I'm going to use where did it go uh, hope and positivity this was a new embossing powder that they came out with earlier this year and I believe a portion of the proceeds went to a charity that they were supporting but I love kind of that silvery disco ball uh, kind of look. It just feels really cool and frosty. Perfect for uh, winter snowflakes, winter sentiments. And I also have, or had, let's hope it's still here, my piece of acetate. Here it is. So my acetate is um, a little bit more narrow so that we can do that smaller tag. And when you are doing acetate, I highly, highly, highly recommend your stamp platform because it's slippery. And when you're putting the embossing ink onto the acetate, if it slips, it gets kind of icky. Do I have, here. So I tried to do that Mary and Bright just freehand and it slipped. So therefore all those good bits kind of melted together and that's never a good thing. So I've got this stamp which I'm going to put away. I'm going to get my acetate. Now I really should punch it first so let's do that. Let's punch this first. It's going to go in that little two inch layer And because I'm doing, trying to do it quickly, it's not working. Let me trim it down just a smidge. And 
and trim this one down as well while we're here. All right. Now this should work. So that's just nesting in that track for the two and a half inch. And my acetate going in the two inch slot. Now when you're doing embossing with acetate, make sure you get the heat resistant acetate. If you just use regular, regular acetate, it will bubble and kind of go funny. Uh, both Lawn Fawn and Creative Expressions has a heat resistant embossing, or sorry, heat resistant acetate. And I'm using Lawn Fawn tonight, but we just got our ecstasy order, so, um, the creative creative expressions will be back in stock really really soon okay let's layer this up and my stand oh make sure it's right side up get that back into place and embossing ink Now again, with the acetate, I'm gonna try, I'm not gonna do two layers uh, or two attempts at it, because again, I don't want it to smear, but I'm gonna give it a good rub. And it's looking pretty good. With the acetate, try really hard not to touch where your stamped image was. Again, it's just kind of sitting on top there until we cure it with the um, embossing powder. Look at that, how beautiful is that? Very frosty and snowy. Flick it as many times as you can. I'm gonna have to go over this, it looks like, with that um, paintbrush. Come on, Mary. There we go. All right. So I'm gonna put this back in the jar. Embossing powders is very much like glitter where you want to do a whole bunch at once because it is a lot to get out. And makes a pretty big mess. All right, let's see if we can flick. Now some of this may, because this is acetate, some of this may be on the other side. So we'll have to be careful with that. Yeah, no, I just messed up my Y. Anyways, you guys will get the idea. And let's heat. Sorry, I see a big chunk there. Okay. Now it is hot, so just be careful when you touch it. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then just like with the previous one, I can layer this up. I could put another little reinforcement, but I like how you can see the other layer behind it. I'm not gonna put ribbon on it right now because I am gonna take some of this Sizzix crystal paste 
if I can get it open. There we go. And now I'm just going to go around the edges to give it that kind of snowy look. And then I'll have to let that dry and then I can put my tags together. Nothing like a little sparkle. I think when it comes to Christmas, you cannot have too much sparkle. And there you have it. So, three tags, three different ways, taking everything to a different level each time. All equally beautiful. Where did my bumblebee go? Here he is. So I hope you enjoyed that. I think that was um, a lot of techniques and a lot of ideas kind of packed into one little time frame. I'm gonna get this one off because I don't want it to dry on my Yeti here. But you can have a lot of fun with embossing powders and you can do all kinds of things. A lot of the same things that you can do with um, ink you can do with embossing powder as long as you're using the embossing ink to go with it and make sure you have fun try different things try the triple tone try two tone uh, you can just have lots and lots of fun so ladies that's it for me tonight i'm a little bit over time but uh, we're happy to bring these ideas to you and if you want to come in and see all the wow all the wow powders we've got we've got two wonderful display cases lots of great color options if you are more of a traditional you want your reds your greens and your golds we have all of that or we have your pinks and your purples and your teals and your wonderful navy blue so um, give them a try and if you make anything please make sure you post for us so we can see what you've made take my sparkle finger and head out for the evening thank you so much and we'll talk to you soon